Greetings everyone and welcome in today's webinar, How to Establish a Strat Strategic Approach to ISO 9001-2015. Great to have you all here with us. I am Sean Mehmeti, the Portfolio Marketing Manager for Quality Management System here at PCB. This webinar will be presented by Mohamed Farouk. Mohamed is a Business Performance Management spe Specialist with excellent knowledge base in ISO Management System, Business Process Improvement and Business Analytical Practice. Qualified Lead Auditor for ISO 9001, 40001, 80001, 6 Sigma Black Belt, etc. Please feel free to write your questions and comments in the question box in the right hand control panel or you can raise your hand and you will have a chance to ask the question directly to Mohammed. Last questions will be answered accordingly at the end of the presentation. Please Mohammed, you may continue with the presentation. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Mohammed Farooq, as uh, Sean introduced. Uh, I think I'm quite audible uh, to you all. Uh, today, we are going to talk about uh, you know, ISO management system, which is uh, specifically for quality, and uh, how do we create a quality management system as a strategic initiative, and you know, how do we basically link and ISO 9001 2015, you know, which is the revised version, you know, putting it together and uh, to align the business better to enhance the performance. So today we're going to talk about that, and uh, I would like to welcome you all. So uh, let's start. Uh, we all. Uh, Uh, this is a brief about me as uh, Sean uh, introduced and so you know, I'm just skipping the slide as he's already spoke about me. So uh, did we ever think about you know how can an ISO uh, help you to achieve the business goals? So why do we do ISO or why do we get certified for ISO management system? You know? uh, different organizations goes for it for different reasons. So there are certain organizations they would like to have it uh, for the sake of branding. There are certain organizations they would like to have it for the sake of commercialization, basically part of the big tenders, or basically to be registered as a vendor with different the major organizations, or they would say that uh, you know we need to have uh, you know efficient processes in place, and so it depends on uh, depends on the reason what they would like to go with it. So, but most of the time, you know, this has been considered as 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 uh, something which is kept aside after getting certified and it is not connected with you know what we normally call business as usual. Business as usual is basically what we do on a business on a daily basis. So these both you know stand separate and you know this doesn't have a connection to or this doesn't synchronize to each other. So today we're going to see that you know how we can put these two together as one and <coughs> so Let's see how this is possible. A well-deployed quality management system can always help us to achieve our business goals. So let's look at uh, any of our businesses. You may be uh, people who uh, who's serving different businesses, who's running different businesses. So what do we have as a business? You know, when we set up a business, you know, first thing we look at is that you know what is that business we're going to do. We decide the activities, which is the scope of our business then we would say that you know what is it we are trying to achieve so which is possibly the business objectives and business goals which is the reason we exist as a business and then to achieve these we possibly would form you know the strategies plans so once we have the strategies uh, you know and plans you know we, what we would have is basically we would say that in order to achieve those business goals, I have the strategies and plans in place. But it's not easy to achieve them. So basically, you will have a lot of challenges and barriers. Uh, you know, uh, you cannot just walk in towards uh, achieving a business objectives. So probably you will have to face, or you will have to walk through, or sustain, or uh, probably you know walk through with a lot of challenges and barriers throughout. So what we do is that you know, in order to achieve those business goals, we have the plans in place, and these plans would be 
probably executed using the resources. And when we talk about resources, this could be your people, this could be a process, this could be your technology, this could be your facilities, anything, anything of that sort. So now let's look at uh, you know what is a quality management system. You know what what happens is you know when you have a quality management system, it is not a set of documents. It is basically a set of activities which we act, which we do in our business and documenting those key activities in the form of process flows or procedures or forms and formats and if possible the companies automates those processes then then it becomes a core business and then once we have these uh, forms procedures process flows we would have the roles and responsibilities assigned to different people you know who would be doing it then we would have the measuring and monitoring in place and uh, based on which we would do the improvement of these business initiatives. So in order to understand uh, our efficient quality management system or in order to have an efficient quality management system, the most important thing is that we need to have defined business goals. Now let's look at uh, what would happen when we possibly start <coughs> a quality management system implementation. So first thing what happens is that you know the quality management system says you need to have a committed top management which which needs to be there you know the roles and responsibility has to be there you need to define the policy the management would uh, clearly announce their intent of why they want to bring in a quality management system into the business so probably they would act as a sponsor and they're showing the commitment towards their stakeholders or their interested parties or people who's interacting with their businesses and helping them uh, to gain the confidence that you know we care for you probably so again and if you look at the new version of uh, the ISO 9001 2015 what you can see is it is talking about a risk-based thinking so we spoke about having a lot of challenges and barriers those challenges and barriers would probably turn into an efficient risk management system and you know this would help us to understand all the risks and opportunities all the risks and opportunities which lies in the business so possibly a risk identified and addressed would probably turn into an opportunity so what would happen is you know when we when we have to set this up when we have to say that you know we need to achieve the business goals we need to have the plans in place we need to address uh, the risks and opportunities you know how would an ISO would help you to do that so we talk about having a lot of uh, processes and procedures which needs to be there uh, using a quality management system so let's see how ISO what ISO talks about at a strategic level so first thing you need to do is that you know you need to understand who are your stakeholders who are your stakeholders or interested parties so in order to understand that you need to basically see that uh, who is interacting with our business so anybody and everybody who is interacting with our business can be your stakeholders it could be your board of directors it could be your customers who are direct customers it could be your employees so once we do that you know we will have a list of stakeholders then the next thing what what we need to do is that you know we need to see the internal and external issues so what is this internal and external issues this is basically trying to understand what are those things which would affect our business in positive as well as in negative way so what uh, what organization can do or what's your business can go for is basically in order to understand your uh, internal issues you can possibly run a SWOT analysis so this SWOT analysis would help you to understand you know what are our strengths what are our weaknesses what are the opportunities and what are the threats of our business so possibly you can see that you know that the strength could be your market share your weakness could be you know your resources which needs to be trained or your technology and enablement comparing to your competitors or the opportunities could be uh, you know a new emerging market or it could be anything you know which which would add value to your 
existing services or products. And the threats could be the threats could be possibly anything which would have an adverse effect to your business. So you can see that you know a very clear specific structure is defined over here. You know I'm not taking you know much into detail to talk about a SWOT analysis. So we spoke about understanding the internal and external issues of an organization. And the internal issues can be identified. And when we say issues, it is not only problems. It is basically the positive and negative sides of our business. So, and what happens is uh, once you have uh, identified the internal issues, you know, you have, uh, you have already identified the list of stakeholders. So it's very easy for us to understand uh, or you know to analyze the internal and external issues considering those stakeholders which we have identified. Now you can see something written here called as PESTEL. So PESTEL is basically political, economical, social, technological, environmental and legal. So what happens is that you know if you need to identify and understand the external issues. So possibly this could be one of the methodologies the standard doesn't say you need to do a SWOT analysis. The standard doesn't say that you know you need to do a PESTEL analysis. But these are some best practices which is in place, which would help us to understand, which would help us to understand uh, the external uh, issues of the organization. Let's say if uh, we, we we spoke about an emerging market, uh, you know, when we were explaining uh, the SWOT. So when you look at a new market, when you look at an emerging market. Possibly, when you're planning for a new business, you would look at the political stability of that country, the economic aspects of that region, then uh, the socio-cultural activities of that place, and you know, legally how rigid and legally how friendly they are into the business. So possibly, this would help us to even to plan the business. You know, let's say if you're starting a new business, you are too early, or you're just, you know you're just planning to start a business so this would help you to even have the feasibility of uh, getting into a business and you know would that business run properly or not so when you when you when you when you probably look into any of these businesses the clause number 4 which talks about the context of the organization and it starts with the internal and external issues of an organization would be of great uh, help in terms of doing the strategic planning of your business. So we spoke about uh, you know listing them, uh, listing the stakeholders, and once you list them, the stakeholders, you list them down. You understand uh, who are they. Then you understood what are the uh, what are the internal and external issues of of the of the organization. And the next thing is that you know what do I what do they expect from us? You know, when you say uh, in the standard, it is told that you need to understand the needs and expectations of the interested parties. The interested parties, stakeholders, are more or less similar. Whoever is interacting with your business would be having certain expectations. So, in order to do that, you know, you can go back to your your quality management principle, which is the first one where you can see something called customer focus. So I, I know you would be familiar with uh, the, uh, the quality management principles. There are seven quality management principles. Uh, so if you look at the customer focus, what happens is you know if you need to have your customer focus, well, the first thing you need to know is you know who are your customers, you know what are the kind of customers which you would probably come to know uh, while you're doing your stakeholder analysis. While you're doing, <clears throat> while you're doing your internal and external issues, and then you need to see what do they expect from you. So possibly you would be able to understand, you know, in terms of. So if you look at uh, the, if you look at the first quality management principles, rather than reading them as customer focus, you can probably read them as your interested party focus. So this would help you to align to address. First thing before address, you identify. Then you uh, you you see what are the needs and expectations as the stakeholders. Then you would probably start addressing them, which would probably help you to increase your revenue in terms of your business. 
increase your customer base, increase your customer retention, your customer satisfaction, your service delivery, and probably you know if I have to give you one of my one of my uh, one of my example in my uh, real life example is probably I would say when we were reviewing our customer feedbacks, we have noticed that you know there was certain customer feedbacks or customer suggestions which they would like to have you know a special training or a service uh, and uh, the ratio of the request was 40 percent for the whole year so we have start we have decided to introduce that as a new service and you know, which had increased in terms of customers which in turn increased the number of uh, the number of uh, you know revenue which you received so probably what I'm trying to tell you is that you know when you have a quality management system you can directly link it with quantifying them with money and probably with revenue which would help you to enhance your entire business and you know it would help you to achieve your business objectives as well so what happens is uh, when you when you identify the needs and expectations of the customers probably you would be able to help them and you would be able to assist them or you would be able to address them in a way that you know which would uh, which would uh, which would help them to complete the needs and in turn you know the enhancement of the business happens if you do it religiously definitely there's going to be serious really uh, serious results we have seen this uh, in our projects so and uh, we spoke about uh, you know having the risk based thinking and uh, if I have to tell you what is risk based thinking if somebody asks you uh, to start a new business the first thing comes in our mind or if somebody starts uh, you know somebody asks us to do something new which is quite big or which is a major change the first thing comes to our mind is how risky is it so we uh, we as uh, you know we as an individual uh, we does this activity on a daily basis so we all automatically does it on a daily basis so when it comes to you know a typical risk management people feel that you know this is quite technical but it is not so this is something which we are foreseeing the potential dangers which is going to be there in our business you know which would help us to address them really well so so and once you identify those potential risks you would have a matrix you know which would help you to uh, you know uh, which would help you to qualify them or categorize them into high medium low so you can have the most complex risk management uh, process or you can have the most basic uh, risk management process sitting in a sitting in a workshop and uh, listing them the potential uh, dangers what you can have which can have considering all the stakeholders what you have listed then you can see that you know is it going to be hitting bad on my business so you can rate them accordingly so this is one of the most simplest one but it is always better to have uh, you know a scoring system of probably 1 to 10 you say 1 to 5 is a high or 1 to 6 is high then uh, 7 to 9 7 to 8 is medium and 9 to 10 is low so possibly and when when you do this uh, when you do this uh, risk assessment what happens is that you know you would see how often this is going to happen and uh, what 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 is going to happen if it hits me or you know what impact what consequences do do we have if if that happens so probably you would multiply the consequences and the business impact it's going to have then you would have the risk rating based on which you can categorize them so this is another simpler method so again if you look at uh, you know what do you gain what do you gain without seeing the risk if you have planned your business objectives or after planning the business objectives if you have not addressed the business risk which is supposed to be there on the go so you may not have efficient results so end of the day what is going to happen is that you know so the first thing what we spoke about you know when you address the customer needs and expectations when you address the needs and expectations of the customers or the interested parties or when you do a proper risk management process you know it is in turn would help you to have efficient process in place so uh, let's see what else do we have in our business you know we spoke about having the plans in place and once we have the plan in place we will have people to address it and we will have processes to support the plans 
and we will have technology to enhance those plans. So what happens? What happens in an ISO? If you see the clause number four, the clause number four context of the organization says you need to lay down your business activities and it needs to be you need to identify the key processes and it needs to be documented and if you look at the new standard it says it is called as documented information so if you need to have this documented information probably first thing you need to identify your key processes uh, then you would see that you know if possible you would automate them and if you have a technology enhancement or a technology enablement and then you would see what kind of people are going to do with it you know you would have uh, the uh, roles and responsibilities uh, defined for those people and then you would see what kind of skill sets are required to achieve them you know so let's say if you need to have someone uh, uh, who who has to do a certain task they need to see that you know what kind of a competency or what kind of a skill sets is required for them to be uh, doing this task so when you look at uh, the skill set it could be your technical skill sets your work experience or probably your <coughs> uh, your professional qualifications all this put together and uh, then you can you may have your behavioral competencies as well you know which is your people management side of it so probably these competency metrics would uh, be defined and the standard requires if you look at uh, the clause number 7 were uh, you know in support it is very clearly defined that you need to have the necessary resources uh, available as well as if you look at the management clauses and the leadership clauses it talks about defining the roles and responsibilities so a competency matrix a well defined competency matrix so you can see that uh, what are the expectations of the customers then you can see that what kind of people what kind of processes what kind of technology is required then you can probably run uh, a planned versus actual check on the competence so what kind of people were required and what kind of people were hired then probably you can see the results around them as well so what you have is in turn is well defined processes you will have and the result of this well defined processes would be the process flows the process interactions and or the procedures and then which will in turn would help you to have the process enhancement and one more important thing what we need to do is that you know what we have done is that we have understood what the customer needs what the market needs how good is the political conditions how stable is uh, the economic uh, side of the country or the region then uh, we have created a risk management system and then uh, we we <coughs> we have got necessary inputs for the risk management system by considering the needs and expectations of the stakeholders or the interested parties and then uh, you know let's not forget uh, you know the legal and the regulatory requirement or the com contractual ob obligations we may have signed or we would be planning to sign a service uh, a lot of service level contracts or the region or the country or certain authority would be requiring you to follow certain legal regulations so when you have probably listed the uh, the uh, the needs and expectations of the interested parties government would be one of your interested party so probably you would have listed what kind of legal requirements or what kind of expectations would a government have so this is like basically going back to what we have done in uh, there as well as when you have listed your supplier your suppliers and you know your other interested parties you would have listed this uh, Uh, you know contractual obligations so probably you are going back there and you're seeing that you know how well can we execute this and what would be the risk associated to it and so let's come back and see what kind of uh, you know we spoke about uh, defining the objectives so as an organization we have strategic objectives we have functional objectives we have operational objectives so if you have to give an example of an objective is the objective of this session is basically to have an understanding of how an ISO 9001 can help us to set or to achieve strategic business initiatives and by the end of the session so we are defining a very specific and with very clear timeline so how are we going to do it you know you're going to attend uh, you know a session by Mr. Uh, Mr. Farooq and uh, with this time 
and the intention of attending it is probably to have an understanding of the strategic initiative of ISO 9000 when putting into the business. So it is just to give you an example. So when you have these objectives, you know, if, uh, if, if I have to tell you what kind of objectives you have to set, you know, I spoke about, uh, you know, the quality management principles. This would be the best tool for you to set the objectives. So a look at customer focus. You know, how can you have customer focus? You can look at your customer engagement. You can look at your customer satisfaction. You can look at your customer enhancement. So this could be, then once you define these objectives, probably you can see that, you know, how are you going to achieve them and, you know, what would be the timeline. So let's look at, you know, who would be associated in the list of interested parties when you look at all these aspects. You know, if you have customer focus, probably you would be having a very good customer engagement programs or very good customer service campaigns which in turn would have the results. So when you set the objectives, it is very important to understand that you use the quality management uh, principles which are seven quality management principles. Normally I call them clepier. If you look at uh, the first alphabet of all the uh, all the quality management principles, it is called as clepier. So it's very easy to uh, remember. So it's customer focus, leadership, engagement of people. So if you have the right customer focus and if you don't have a proper leadership, you know, probably it would lead you to disengagement of people. And uh, we've discussed about the process approach, which is one of the most important initiative of uh, the ISO 9001-2015. And if you have all these things put together, you can probably look into improvement of your business. So, and uh, when you look at the, the evidence-based decision making, it's basically taking decisions not based on your intuitions, not based on your gut feeling. It should be based on your data or business information, which should be the first priority. And the relationship management is something which you have to manage, uh, uh, manage throughout your business. So when you're setting the objectives, you can set three objectives from each of this, or you can set two objectives from each of this, then you can see how you're going to achieve this. But the most important thing what you have to look at is, you have to look at your business goals before you set them up. So it needs to be aligned with your business goals. So if the top management says in the policy that you know we, the, the, highest, uh, the highest achievement what we look for is uh, probably uh, engage customer engagement so you can see that you know how my quality management system can help my business to have a, uh, my business to achieve the customer focus so you can look at your customer campaigns you can look at your uh, customer satisfaction process or you can look at your customer satisfaction uh, programs which has been created uh, in the business so so when you set your objectives, you know, this is one of the most important part of uh, the strategic, uh, strategic initiative of the ISO 9001. If you have the right objectives, you know, you will have very good results. Let's have a look at it. First thing you need to do is that you need to define the objective. So you would say what is that we are trying to achieve. We have our organizational objectives, our business goals. So we will say that, you know, how we can cascade it down into uh, our quality management objectives. So let's look at why why are we going with the quality management objectives. The organization cares for the business. The organization wants to enhance the business. So which is the reason in order to achieve the organizational, uh, organizational goals, they have brought in a quality management system to act as a support framework and you know which would enable. So the first thing you need to do is that you know you need to set the objectives which needs to be smart. It is, you know, we all understand what is smart. So, the, and it gives us transparency, focus of organization, alignment and engagement of our business. And this is another method of uh, doing the objectives is basically, you know, do, using something called OKR. This is very much used by Google. This is called objectives and key results, very much used by the technology organizations the big giants in the world started by Intel long back. And this is basically more of an interactive way of uh, setting up the objectives. So when you set the objectives, it says you need to have a minimal number of objectives. 
and the maximum period of uh, review is three months and uh, you will have regular review of your objectives and for each of the objectives you will have you know three or five key results defined and which would also explain what actions you would have uh, to to achieve them and which would give, give you a lot of business insight you go back and redefine your objectives you go back and scrap your objective if it's not working well for your business or you go back and see uh, you know if it is going well you continue going with them so once you set the objective the next thing what you do is that you know you align it in between your team then you communicate to the entire organization or people who are responsible for it so this is very important communication is one of the most important aspects and it is very well addressed in the quality management system so once you communicate them you know the next thing is basically you start measuring them so how do you measure it you know when you have the quality management system objectives defined and the organizational objective defined you would have also defined the key performance indicators to see the performance of each of these objectives so this would help you to understand who are doing what at what level of uh, activities or what level of engagements they have so these key key performance indicators in terms of the process in terms of the people in terms of the technology in terms of facilities or in terms of the actual achievement of the objective itself would help you to understand where exactly are we today and you know do we have to really continue with them so this is just an example of uh, you know setting up an objective on the customer service and the service delivery i'm not digging deep into it the slide is you know very well self explanatory so when you have setting up an objective on uh, delivery so you would say that you know we would deliver on time and minimize the lead time uh, so if you have if you're completing the task of delivering the services probably in two days uh, without having a rework on it you will complete you'll try to complete it on you know probably in 18 uh, in in 36 hours or in 30 hours which would lead you to have an efficient process cycle time and in turn it does will lead you to have an efficient workforce as well as uh, the the revenue side of the business so so the measurement and the evaluation we spoke about the KPIs and these KPIs would help you to understand where exactly uh, and these KPIs can be set at different levels it could be at a strategic level it could be at a functional level and it could be at an operational level as well so the top to bottom bottom to top this can be measured by assigning people uh, by assigning roles and responsibilities by having review meetings by by having uh, by having business dashboards by having collaborative business dashboards which would in turn help you to understand where exactly do you stand in terms of achieving those uh, objectives which is set in the business as well as quality management system so another important thing what normally uh, happens is that you know you need to run internal audits at regular intervals the standard says you need to have regular internal audits so normally when you look at an, uh, conducting an audit what happens is you run an audit and you say that okay this procedure is not working well so I would say that you know when you actually run an audit you need to start from the objectives so you you go and have a look at the objectives what are the top uh, what are the total number of objectives defined this is called as a strategic audit so this strategic audit will help you to understand what are the objectives of the organization and what are the objectives of the quality management system is it aligned with the businesses what they are running is it aligned with the organizational objectives so what you would understand you would see the KPIs and you would see the performance level of these objectives and if that objective if that objective is having the necessary strategies and plans the resources in terms of people process technology funds facilities and assets and they would see the performance of it and if that objective is giving you positive impact to your business is it giving positive results to my business let's say by running a customer campaign or by achieving a customer satisfaction uh, percentage of 85 or 90 is it increase the number of customers or does it uh, help me to increase the number of customers you know what what I do what, what I have currently 
or is it going to have uh, you know and uh, is it going to have uh, a very good retention of my existing customer base or is it going to have an excellent service management system which in turn you can see you can literally quantify the number of people which has been increased by this campaign and the the number of revenue in the which has been which has been generated so you can literally see that if you have five or six objectives you can say how many of them are performing well and how many of them are positive are having a positive impact your business so what you need to do is that you know the positive ones you keep on continuing with them what do you do with the negatives the negatives basically you will have to make sure that you know why are these happening so possibly you would go back and check the processes the people or the technology or anything which is behind that you would run an analysis you would do a root cause analysis or you would do a quick check on what is going wrong so when you go and do an audit rather than going and starting from the procedures first thing you need to do is that you know you look at the structure of the organization you look at the organization uh, the organization chart then you look at the business objectives what they said and then you look at the quality management system objectives what they said you start monitoring from there so you would see all the positive side of uh, the positive achievement of the objectives is it leading into the business impact the positive business impact of your business and if you have negative uh, if your objectives are not been met you would possibly go back and check what is failing so do we have they corrected those processes procedures what needs to be corrected or have they scrapped those objectives and you know de redefine their objectives so possibly this would lead you to uh, check the entire organization by just starting from the by just starting from uh, the the quality objectives or the organizational objectives and the next thing is once you once you see them you can see this would lead you to have process improvement initiatives and this would have uh, improvements in your business again uh, if you, it would come back to setting up the new objectives or continuing with the existing ones which would probably uh, help you to have you know corrective actions wherever you have you are struggling or wherever you have negative impacts on your business so a negative impact an example for a negative impact would be uh, you know because of not being complied with the legal requirement you know you would have paid certain fines you would have lost your repo your your brand name so you would have lost a project so that can be called as you know a negative impact of your business so you would go back and check what do we have the legal requirements or is it addressed in the list of uh, uh, needs and expectations of the interested parties so if, if it is not done if it is done who is supposed to be uh, responsible the roles and responsibilities so the ISO is very clearly defining you a very good framework of doing things in the right way if you put it together so I'm not talking about the entire management system over here I'm talking about you know the, the most simple business framework you know a quality management system which gives us so when you have this uh, corrective actions in place you would also do the necessary follow-ups and making sure that you know this is done properly so this is this is basically would help you to have a lot of improvement uh, in your business so <clears throat> checking the objectives seeing the performance level then you would see the positive and negative impact of them then you would do a root cause analysis then you would see what is going on you go back and correct uh, your people process technology or the facility whatever needs to be corrected then you would reach keep checking on them again and again till it performs better so this would help you to improve your business this would help you to have a lot of uh, business process improvement initiatives and you can check the results based on that so what I'm trying to tell you is that uh, you know an organization will have uh, a lot of business goals and they will have uh, a lot of business objectives at a strategic and a functional and an operational level so why do we have management system coming into picture so I'm concerned about the quality of my service I'm concerned about uh, my customers and my supplies so uh, I'm, me as an organization I would like to bring in quality management system as one of the pillars of my organization so 
if you look at uh, you know the other management systems like environment management system OSHAs or business continuity so what happens is that these acts as pillars of the organization and the objective set would be aligned to the corporate objectives so if you look at the high level structure of the new ISO standards it is very clearly defined that these objectives needs to be aligned with your organizational objective so if you look at an organization and if you look at a management system as a pillar to an organization it would not be a standalone system it would always help you to achieve your business goals and not just you know sitting as an idle system you know which is uh, which is for the sake of uh, certification or which is for which is which has been kept for the sake of having the certificate hanging on the wall so let's have them efficient so in order to have them efficient we need to connect them uh, to our business what we do so rather than bringing in a new system when any any time when you're planning to planning to go for an ISO 9001 quality management system you need to see that you know your existing business activities are considered documented aligned it with the standard requirements then the international based practices would be added in with having the most common business framework of the world which is a quality management system so what in turn we have is we will have uh, the governance which is in the form of your business review meetings your management review meetings your you know proper monitoring and measurement and you will have customer satisfaction which in turn will have enhancement in terms of revenue so we are talking about uh, putting the right strategy in and regardless of whatever stage of the business you are in whatever stage of the business you are in this can be applied you know this can be applied as a planning tool because if you look at the close close number four to seven it talks about how efficiently you can plan uh, your business you know it starts from context of the organization your leadership your uh, your planning side of it your support side of the business so it is very clearly defined how can you plan your business it could be your existing plan it could be uh, it could be your existing business or it could be the uh, uh, the new business which you're starting so uh, that that's uh, that's uh, all about uh, the session and before I leave I know I would like to uh, tell you thank you very much uh, for attending the session and the most important thing is uh, please read out the quality management principles which which is actually the foundation of the ISO 9001 or any other business management system and which acts on a plan do check act which is uh, you know the PDCA cycle so I would hand it over to Sean so he would yeah. take it further thank you yeah. very much Sean. Yeah, thank you very much you have any questions? yeah yeah thank you very much Mohammed for this uh, great presentation uh, we want to inform you that PCB provi provides training and certification service for ISO 9001 introduction, foundation, lead implementer and lead auditor. The training is designed to provide you with required knowledge to carry out audits of quality management system against ISO 9001-2015 and ensure that the organization is competent in maintaining its quality management system. The exam and the certification fees are included in the training price and also particip participation certificate of CPDs will be issued to participant. Uh, for more information, please visit our website pcp.com slash training. Uh, because of the time limitation, I'm going to read just uh, one question. Okay, the first question, Mohammed, is, is there any recommended uh, time frame to implement ISO 9001 in an organization? Uh, if, if you if you look at the questions it really depends on the size and shape of the organization and uh, the uh, the market which you're trying to uh, address so uh, if you if you look at the size of your organization and the organization structure uh, you know it will give you an answer and normally you know it takes around three months which is a minimum to implement uh, the the management system which is the smallest organization at the most minimal level yeah, okay, thank you very much. And uh, because of the time limited, we have to conclude this presentation. However, if you have any other question, you can send your questions uh, through email and uh, Mohammed will answer them individually via email. Thank you again, Mohammed, for this clear and informative presentation. I want to thank all the attendees as well for taking the time 
out of your busy schedule to join us today. We hope you enjoyed the webinar. To keep, up, to keep up with our webinars, please check our PCB's webinar schedule in our website, pcb.com, or, or our social media network. Since next week, we are organizing an, a, webinar, a webinar on interesting topic. Uh, next Tuesday, we are hosting a webinar on uh, measurement uncertainty of lab equipment, a requirement for ISO 17025 accreditation. Thank you, Mohamed, for this uh, very informative presentation. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Goodbye.